already done uh, something similar once before. Um, we'll recursively partition into uh, sizes of root n, square root of your size, right? So in the beginning, we'll we have n elements. So we partition uh, into root n blocks of root n size each. Um, somehow, we're going to find recursively the prefix minimum of each block i, right? And then do what we were just discussing. We are going to take the minima uh, of each block and find the prefix minimum on that minima. Um, and then prefix minimum, as just discussed, for every element can be found. Right? Your prefix minimum is your prefix minimum within the block. You already know the, the minimum to your left within your block. And you know the minimum among the blocks. Right? So the prefix minima of all the minima to the left of you and your minimum, your prefix minimum, the minimum of those two is your global prefix minimum. Okay. Um, so how long will this take? Uh, the last argument. So I, I break things into sizes of root m. Okay. For each I have found the prefix minimum. And so that means, let us call it the local prefix minimum. You know the smallest element to your left but within your block, in your root n size. Now because we have divided into root n blocks, we can find the minima of each block. In fact, we do not have to find it. If we recursively found the prefix minima, then the last element of each block is the minima of each block. We take these minima out. So the first block's minima is m, what does it say, start at? m1 should probably start at 0, but doesn't matter. m1, second block's minima is m2, third block's is m3. We take all of these minima and find prefix minimum of these. Okay? Size root n, so we can recursively call this function again. Uh, we find the, uh, the minima of these. So for, my, for me, this is my block. I know the minima of everybody on my left within my block. I also need to find the minima of all those blocks right? because my real global prefix minima could be either in my block or one of these blocks to my left. Right? So if I had the prefix minima of all the minima that are to my left, then I would know. Right? So if I take that guy's prefix minima, so that guy meaning the in the second level min, min, prefix minima, which found uh, the uh, minima of m0, m1, m2, all the way up to m i minus 1. Right? So the minima of those things, meaning, meaning prefix minima of m i minus 1 in the second level, is the minimum across all the blocks before, on to my left. And I know within my block. So the minimum of these two values will be my global prefix minima. Um, how long would it take to partition root n blocks? What about uh, finding the minima of or rather prefix minimum of the root n things? Right? So the, the step number 3 here. Order n work. Order we can, we can do order and work, right? Order and work, order one time. Uh, and similarly, first one can also be done within the envelope of order one time, order and work. Uh, and then what about the last one? Every prefix minimum that I have to find is a minimum of two things, right? So everybody is figuring out their old values, uh, the minimum of their old values and their corresponding minima in the second level minima array. Okay, so order one time, but everybody is doing it, so order and work. Um, now the recursive part. This is exactly the same as what we had done for min finding. Right? How many levels of recursion shall we have? Log log n. Log log n. Right? Log log n levels of recursion um, until things become constant size or size 1 and at each level we will be doing order and work, order one time. 
So it will be um, a total of n log log n work and log log n time. Um, so, so let's get back to the general algorithmic techniques we, had, we have discussed so far. And uh, I want to, there's a couple that, that I hadn't got around to finishing that I'll, I'll do now before moving on to uh, talking about specific generic algorithms. Like how do you uh, sort and how do you balance a tree and things, things of that sort. So we talked about pipelining, balance binary tree, uh, divide and conquer, partitioning, accelerated cascading. Pointer doubling is the last thing we were doing. Uh, I'm going to start there. I'm going to give you a very quick uh, review of pointer doubling. And then uh, symmetry breaking is the thing we are going to talk about next. Um, so how did pointer doubling work? Um, I'm not going to go through the detailed example here uh, because we have already discussed the main idea. Uh, in this case, the example is you find the roots of a forest. Um, it's tree, but uh, disconnected, so it's a forest, and uh, every node needs to find its root. Okay, so how will so the parent will be talking to his the, its parent at the same time? Next time you talk to your parents' parent. Right. So in log n steps, you will have root wherever your root was, okay? And so... Log n, we need to have a balanced... Well, log n is, yeah, so I should say that the height of, yeah, your distance of the tree log of that. I didn't mean log of the number of nodes. So, we, everybody keeps doing parent of i, parent of parent of i. And again, just as a reminder, if you are doing this, you will be doing this in scratch space rather than your main pointer because you probably want to use it again. Sorry? So not log of height. Log of height. Right? You're, you're, if you, it's height steps, then you'll take as many steps. Each step, you'll be going up one step. Here, you're going log of height. Right? You have to travel h and by jumping over the pointers because everybody else is jumping along with you. So what? Oh. You can reach there in log of height time. Jump will become twice of its. The jump will become twice, then four times, and eight times, and so on. Okay, and the work will be n times log of height because everybody is doing that. And so the main idea is uh, you uh, uh, push your computation to a certain distance, and everybody is doing the same thing. Computation meaning your results. Uh, and uh, after log to the distance uh, that you have to send the result, um, you're going to be able to push it all the way through. And um, so it's another, did we do list ranking? Yes. I think we did, right? So another example is list ranking, where um, you want to find the distance from the last element. And the same idea will apply. As long as, in, yeah, I, now I remember. Uh, as long as you are, so here is what you would do. Um, as long as you are allowed to corrupt your uh, next pointer, everybody keeps doing next of next, and um, you'd reach there uh, in log of the distance time, like that. Now, this takes n log n work n log n time. Can you do better? How would you improve it? Especially the, the work is slightly maybe on the high side. Okay. Break it into chunks. It's a list, yes. It's a linear list, yes. So chunks. We are already breaking it. Yeah, we are corrupting the next pointer in this process. And so, we are basically saying we, in a temporary next pointer, we are doing all this. And so, we can break it as long as we have a way to restore it to the original condition. So, so suppose you were able to take off 
enough number of elements so that you had left only n, n by log n elements. We will we'll remove uh, enough elements so that we are left with only n by log n elements. Okay. And, and, and let us not even think about implementation because it is complicated to keep track of which ones you have removed and bring it back, but we will have to. break it into chunks and every chunk we can find the smaller chunk. And suppose it is not even a list, suppose it is a graph just like a tree. But in, the, in this case breaking into chunks won't be a trivial like order one. Dropping. It won't be order one, it won't necessarily be order one, but as long as it is within uh, your log n envelope, you should not theoretically you should not care. Okay, um, so we will we'll, I will let you think about this, especially in, a, in the context of a graph, you are going to have to remove independent. Uh, sets. Yeah, you would be shrinking the graph in some way. You you would, right? but you wouldn't want to remove big uh, chunks from the same location. You will want to remove every alternate one, like was uh, mentioned. Um, so we'll, we'll we probably will come back to that later. Um, uh, by graph, I actually meant a graph, but yeah, you can think of a forest as well. So what do you want to do with the graph? get to a particular Basically, <laughs> basically. We are not trying to find the shortest path, we are just tr trying to reach a given destination. Right? But you can think of, to simplify uh, or to be more concrete in this case, you can think of it as a forest. In fact, you can even come back to the list, you can, you can do it for a list also. Okay, so let us move on to uh, this other um, technique called symmetry breaking and it essentially is uh, something that is very um, peculiar to parallel uh, algorithms in that if I have, let, let me give you an example, um, we have a cycle and then I want to color uh, this cycle, meaning that alternate nodes should have different color. Um, and I would like in, in, in uh, what would a sequential algorithm do? I think it does not have it, but what would it do? Start some arbitrarily point, right, and say you are zero. Next is one. Next is zero. Next is one. And when you come back, um, it's not usually. You do it. You cannot do anything. You can't do anything. You at the end you have to. You, 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 yeah, you, you may need to say two. <laughs> two. It, it's not always possible to do it in two colors. So you'll give the last one a, a third color, uh, if it's uh, an odd number of vertices. Right. So, but that start at an arbitrary point is something that is missing in the parallel world, right? Um, because you want to all of them to do start doing something. Um, you can randomize things, right? But so far we are not going into the random direction yet. Um, so, how do you break symmetry? And in this case, let's assume that. Uh, there is an array which uh, gives you the, the cycle right? and uh, for every position of the array it says who the next element in the array is. You can start with your TID. Um, but 
But if you see that my neighboring is the same color, then I am labeled with a third. Um, so TID is not the way to break symmetry, right? Because the problem has the symmetry. But I want to start everywhere. I don't want to take order n steps to reach there. I want to start in parallel everywhere and start assigning colors. And at the end, they should match up. That would be what ideal parallel algorithm would do. It's not just about starting somewhere. It's about everybody doing something, uh, but not knowing how they are different from others. Everybody locally sees it, one edge coming in, one edge going out. Um, it's the same as every other, so topologically. But how does it help? Because uh, it's not that TID number one is getting node number one. Otherwise, you'll have to find where node number one is. There is no code. Yeah, there is an array, right? And, 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 and basically, there is an ID and it says, your, your next is that fellow, your next is that fellow. So you can't say TID 1 gets node number 0 and TID 2 gets, no, uh, what did I say? TID 0 gets node number 0, TID 1 gets node number 1, TID 2 gets node number 2. Can't do that. Random access is there, it's PDAN. You take the node. Uh, okay, so let's say we do that. Where is, how do you do the coloring then? But I, I am TID 5, okay? So I got node number 5. But node number 5's next pointer says 36. So. 36, 37, 37. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not that node number 5's pointer is to 6, right? So I can't say I am odd, so my node number is odd, so let me color myself by odd color. You can color in same Check the index number. So, we have to do something based on the index, right? index of the, uh, sorry, uh, something similar, there, there is a, a flavor of pointer jumping here also, but let me, uh, let's just jump ahead. Uh, so, this is a, a, a kind of one step of the algorithm, where you give me a coloring, and I am going to give you another color. And the goal is to ultimately reach three colors because we know it. Another coloring. So I am just change, going to keep reducing. You give me some, uh, in the beginning you can say ID i is your color i. And everybody gets. We start this. with n colors and try to converge. And try to converge to three colors. Right? So this is one step of it. So you have got some coloring given to you and based on your color IDs, in this case, in, you can also use node ID, but we are going to use color IDs, uh, which in the beginning is the same as index ID, if you will. Uh, we'll take the color ID and assign to you a new color. Okay, and this is the way we do it. Everybody is doing it, right? So we have an old color, C of I. My index is I. Uh, the the node number I'm working on is I. I can read the array C of I, which says what is its color current color is. I can read E of I, which says who is its next node. Right? So, every uh, element is looking at the node assigned to you, to it and the next in the cycle, okay. which may be at whichever tree ID, we don't know. Um, and we will say, let us look at their, the bit patterns of those two colors and scanning from the right, find the first one that is different. Suppose that is k, starting at 0. Right? If the, the first one is different, it is 0. Third one is different, it is 2 and so on. We are going to assign to you a color of 2 times k plus your bit where you are different. Okay? So, that is 2k plus bit k of your current color. Before we talk about why, is, is the process clear? We take the bit pattern that you have. We also take the bit pattern of your next, your successor in the cycle. We figure out the rightmost mismatch, which is at position k, 
starting counting at from the right and we give you the new color of true times k plus your current bit value at that position which will be 0 or 1 so the final color you get is 2k plus 0 or 2k plus 1 so it's I, either odd or even okay, so let's uh, look at this um, here are two bit patterns um, 1011 1, 1 and 1 1 uh, 1 1 k is equal to 2 because it's the third position where they are different um, and so this fellow is going to get and that bit is 0 so it's going to get twice uh, of k plus 0 so its next color is 4 meaning 1 0 0 okay. but here we are not considering what is our target uh, number of colors it's 3 this is this is one step we'll have this is we won't be done after I mean, where is this? It's not coming here yet at all. The idea is that you keep doing it, you'll get get reach three. We reduce by one. No, we'll reduce by a lot. We'll we'll come to that. Um, but we'll th this will converge much faster than it seems at first sight. Um, and so the, another example where the bit difference is at where at the zeroth bit position. And uh, the value is 1 over there, so it should say 2 times 0 plus 1. Right, uh, this is paste, this copy and paste problem. So, why does this produce a coloring in the first place? Right? Not even talking about how many colors we get. Is it a coloring? Given that originally we started with a coloring. We will get to that also, but first is it coloring in the first place? That the consecutive, consecutive yeah, because I am I am doing this in a, in, in a symmetric way in some sense, right. I am going to look at your bit pattern and locally decide what to do with your color. How do you make sure that the next guy is not getting the same color that you are getting or similarly the previous guy? Well, next guy will have a different bit at the position where I had the 0 or one. Yes. So, uh, next person cannot have the same equation 2 into 2 plus 0. So, it will be 2 into 2 plus 1. It, ne it need not be, but it is comparing it with the next guy. So, so, but, so at that position, so it will be either 2 into 3 plus 0 or something. Exactly. So, there will be some position k. Right? If So, if it is not a coloring, what are you saying? That my color after the change and your color after the change is the same. Just that addition of one bit is not going to be su sufficient for it, right? To be the same, our k must be the same, because k is that's why k is being multiplied by two. But then also say that two colorings. I mean, the if input is two col colored thing, then it will fail. Yes. Yeah. In fact, even for three, it will fail. So why? Figure it out. It will work only if it is greater, strictly greater than three. Um, so, if the k is the same for r and uh, two colors to end up being the same, no, no, r, so this is a proof by contradiction. Right? So, we said that let us say that the r colors are the same after the change, which means that k must be the same. If k is the same, then the bit must also be the same. But we just said that the bit differs at that position, right? So there is no way that we can get the same color at two consecutive vertex positions. Okay. All right. So how many bits? How many different bit values could you be getting? Given that your previous color can be fit in k bits, uh, am, am I using k for something else? Yeah, t bits. Previous color fit in t bits, <coughs> meaning the color went from 0 to 2 to the t, minus 1. Now 
So if the previous you started with 2 to the 32 different colors which fit in 32 bits, the next time you are going to get 31 different colors, 32 different colors, 0 to 31, okay, which fits in 5 bits. And the next time it is going to fit in log of 5 bits. Okay. So it, it goes down really, really fast. How fast? We will have to wait uh, and uh, see. So we uh, just discussed um, figuring out the three, it's figuring out the coloring of a cycle, and um, the number of iterations that you are going to take is log star of n, right? because every time you are reducing by log of log of that previous count, because the number of bits is going down by log. The number of bits was already log of different number of uh, elements, different number of colors. Okay. So, the total number of steps you are taking is log star of n and everybody is busy every, every uh, step. So, the work is n log star of n. Okay. Um, but the number of colors will not go be below 6 because you are going to go to log t plus 1. Right? So, if you have come down to 3 bits, you are not going to go down. So, what happens if you reach 6 and this process stops? After 6, it's, it does not go down. So, you have reached 6 bits and you know you can reach 3 bits, 6 colors, sorry. You have reached 6 colors, you know you can reach 3. Um, you say, I am going to remove colors number, uh, say we are starting at 0, then 3, 4 and 5. We will do this in 3 steps. First remove 3, then 4, then 5 or whatever, 5, then 4, then 3. So, to remove a color 5, what do we have to do? Everybody who does not have 5, sit still. Everybody who has 5, do something. Right. So, neighboring colors will can be only 2 of 0, 1 and 2, because there are only 2 of them. So, you always have the third color. If it is something like 3 or 4, then? Um, if it is 3 or 4, then, then you can arbitrarily choose, but uh, later on you are going to get it fixed. So, that, that is it on 3 coloring. And um, can you, can you improve that? Although it is reasonable, n log star n is really small, but the ideal optimal would be order n and it is possible to do that. Okay. Um, however, the best, best known algorithm uh, increases if you want to make it work optimal, the um, time will go up. Okay. All right. Uh, now let's. Uh, any questions on this? Okay. Uh, let's go to uh, sorting. So, what's the like the symmetry breaking general idea in this? The general idea is, uh, in fact, this itself can be used as a subroutine lots of times, where you take the bit pattern and you make some multiple of the bit size, okay, where the difference is. 
crucial. That's the crucial part. Um, <laughs> and uh, even at a higher level, the idea is that you do something based on the bit pattern and ensure that what you do is not going to be the same as what the next guy does. That's where the symmetry comes from. So similar uh, approaches can also be used when let's say everybody has two outgoing arrays. But you can all, if, if you have an arbitrary graph, uh, you don't always need to break symmetry. There's some places where you might need to break symmetry. And on those places you're going to have to do something of this sort. Graph coloring is a more general problem. Graph coloring will be more general. So here we don't have uh, two we don't know both the neighbors. We don't know. We don't know. I mean, does uh, do I do I know both my neighbors? Cycle. If if you don't, what do you can you get it? In fact, for the last step, you do need. Yeah. The last step. Yeah. So how do how do you get the the predecessor if you don't? You don't have it. Yeah. Basically, in in order one time order n work. You can create that array. So parallel sorting. We have already looked at some of them. Uh, there are some quintessential, for historic reasons, uh, parallel sorting algorithms. We'll talk about uh, one of those first. It's called bitonic sorting. Okay, and then I had shown you a CUDA code example of bitonic sorting, um, with the promise that we'll come back to it. And this is. Uh, where we come back to it. So a bitonic sequence is um, a sequence which is the name comes from the fact that it has two tones, right? It's increasing and then decreasing. Okay. Strictly, a bitonic sequence uh, is allowed to be a cycle. Uh, so increasing, decreasing, modulo the size. So whatever the smallest is. You, you start scanning to its right and it will keep increasing. And when you run off the end, you come to the other side. Um, either it will keep increasing or at some point it will start decreasing and then keep decreasing until it reaches the same point. Okay. So it's bitonic in a modular sense. For the time being, let's just consider just pure two tones where uh, it increases from zero all the way to, the, to somewhere. And in fact, in, in our case, uh, we'll even take a more limited kind of bitonic sequence that it increases to n by 2 and then decreases to. So I've got one such bitonic sequence and I want to sort it. Can you do better than just starting off from scratch? Merge. So like you know it's increasing from here and decreasing from here. So the start index in the first one out here and the last one out here. And so you're essentially merging Merging in the opposite direction. Yes. How long will it take? Log, log in time. Here, uh, so it can be done faster, but the algorithm that I'm going to, sh to show you, which is the historic bitonic sorting uh, method, is, and in fact, it will work even when you have the cyclic shift. You take an element from one half of the subsequence and another half of the subsequence and compare those two. The smaller one goes on one side, the larger one goes on the other side, and you repeat it. Okay, so subsequence one will be formed by minima of pair by pair pairwise comparisons, and for each of the same comparisons, the maxima will go in the other list. This won't sort it, but every element in one of those subsequences will be less than the other one. Okay. Let, let's see this uh, pictorially. We have, uh, so in order for us to do comparison along the y-axis, I've just shifted the second tone uh, to the left. Right. Then comparison is first year, first year, first year, first year, I mean second year, second year, third year, third year, and so on. Okay. So where is the subsequence one? All the lower ones. Where is the subsequence two? All the upper ones. Subsequence one is the left half of your sorted result. 
subsequence 2 is the right half of your sorted result, but we have to sort subsequence 1. Sequence 1 is a bitonic sequence of half the size, okay, increasing then decreasing. And subsequence 2 is, is decreasing increasing, so it is the mirror image, still a bitonic sequence of half the size. So how long will it take to sort it? Order? Order N work. Order 1. Order log n time. Order 1 time. Why order 1 time? We just create more subsequences. But we can't start working on these subsequences until the first uh, split has happened. Right? After first split, you can start making those two subsequences uh, sorted in parallel. But how many such steps will be necessary? Log n, right? And uh, n log n is going to be the amount of work involved because everybody is busy in every step. Okay, so in n log n time, uh, n log n work, n log n time, you can sort a bitonic sequence. What if you started with general numbers? Can you use bitonic sequence sorting to sort any general sequence? You can if you can generate the bi a bitonic sequence from a random sequence. So if I had two bitonic sequences, can I merge into one? Two separate merging. Separate merging? I mean, Sorry. The interior tones of both you can merge and merge. Um. Uh, yeah. Why not necessary? Because first sequence will be overall smaller than the second sequence. Exactly. There is, there are two bitonic sequences. I have no idea about their relative values with respect to each other. So, you compare the highest of first sequence with the lowest of the second sequence? So, compiling will tell me whether this half of this and this half of this lacking also. But then, what if it is not? Log log and merge, merge screen. We can uh, merge the in tones. And then we have to merge, merge the sorted. Yeah. Right. So we'll, we'll have to merge somehow, and we can go back to the to the original merge algorithm, or we stay with the bitonic uh, idea, where we take the first bitonic sequence, we sort it just like we know how. We take the second bitonic sequence, we sort it. There is nothing, nothing more to do. One is sorted increasing, the other is sorted decreasing, you have got a bitonic sequence. Okay. So, um, if I can sort a bitonic sequence, I can also create big bitonic sequence. And so, this is uh, eventually the final algorithm and uh, lots of people have implemented it in hardware. Although it is not the most efficient uh, sorting algorithm, it, its primitives are, are so simple. So you can implement a hardware sorter with it very easily. Um, so the idea is you, you start with two element sequences, which is always bitonic. And from two elements, you create four element sequences by merging them from four element, eight element subsequence sequences until you have made an n element sequence. Okay. After you have made an n element bitonic sequence, you sort it, just like uh, we, we figured out, okay. And so, uh, pictorially, or uh, this is how in fact uh, hardware for uh, this would uh, physically even look, is um, it takes a bunch of inputs on one end and it produces the sorted output on the other side. Um, and each of these units, which is a compare exchange unit, takes a pair and puts the minimum of those, those pairs at the top and maximum at the bottom or the other way around. 
right? it can be controlled uh, whether min goes at the top or the max goes at the top and so just following uh, that example in, in this case um, the leftmost is your input in whatever order you, you wish and uh, so you take the first bitonic sequence which is 3 7 and sort it so in, in the second column it, you're creating bitonic sequences of length 4 by taking length 2 bitonic sequences and merging it. So, 3, 7 has been sorted in increasing direction and the next pair which was 8 and 6 has been sorted in the decreasing. In this case, it, they came that, in fact, no, 7, 3 came the opposite way but uh, 8, 6 came the same way. And similarly, 4, 1 has been sorted in the increasing direction and 5 and 2 has been sorted in the decreasing uh, and as a result of which we are going to get bitonic sequences that are longer. Okay, so now we have got 3, 7, 8, 6 and 1, 4, 5, 2 and so independently we are going to sort 3, 7, 8, 6 in increasing order and 1, 4, 5, 2 in decreasing order. So now we have a bitonic sequence of the full, uh, we are going to go through the, the sorting of bitonic sequence again and uh, which is again comparison uh, at, at log, log n levels, right? it, it looks very clean and uh, that is also the reason why it is implemented in hardware is that it has a very butterfly like communication you compare with uh, something that is 2 to the i away, then 2 to the i minus 1 away, 2 to the i minus 2 away and then at the end of it you have generated the sorted result. Like point, point um, I Ulta. not quite, um, I, I do not see pointer jumping here. Two to zero, then you first access your pair and like 2 raise to 0 distance away, then 2 raise to 1 distance away. No, here you actually it is 2 raised to the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? So, your distance 8 away, then 4 away, then 2 away. No, no, it is not opposite. You are not actually going 2 to the increasing number of distances away. You are not going from 2 to the i to 2 to the 2i. You are going from 2 to the i to 2 to the i plus 1. So, it is not increasing as fast. It is not log of the height, but it is order of height. Okay. So, uh, the time taken will be log squared n, right? log n times log n y. So, what about one stage? We, we, we just figured that out. If I had an n long bitonic sequence, um, then uh, how much would it be to sort it? One bitonic sequence where we uh, make one by one, one, one to one comparisons and divide it into two bitonic sequences. Log n time, right? Log n time and n log n work. Uh, so last stage takes log n time. How much does the previous stage take? We are only talking about time, right? So instead, we what we were doing in the previous stage, sorting n by two big sequence here and n by two big sequence here. This in the increasing order, this in the decreasing order. So log of n by two, right? Which means log n minus one. And the next one will take log n minus two stages. Uh, log n minus 3 stages and so on. So, sum it up log squared n stages. Okay. And everybody is busy every time, so n log squared n time. Okay. Um, Let us stop here and uh, um, if there are any questions on bitonic sorting and, 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 and in fact, let me uh, go through the end of it. You can also see this as a recursive uh, recurrence relationship. And so, you are basically saying that you are doing log n work here uh, and then taking uh, 
something time this is for the time time to do sort n things is to uh, sort n by two things and then log n additional stages to sort the final binary bitonic sequence okay and so then you can solve this and get the same result. Okay. So, so uh, due to the simply nature of each block and all those things, there is a limit to the kind of operations you would want to do for a new block. Um, yes. Just to study uh, final algorithms in their full generality, then you cannot actually implement all of them as far as No, not yes. Not everything will be uh, really CUDA friendly. Um, but by this, the idea is, in fact, there are lots of people now. Because it has essentially spawned a, a mushroom of uh, research growth in this area uh, to design algorithms that are suitable for this architecture because this architecture is becoming so widespread. Um, what changes to the original algorithms you need to make so that it comes in the Cindy uh, environment? Okay.